Rigid and windy today here in Logan, Utah. No score. Start of the second quarter. Colorado State's been scoring a lot this year. 59 against Utah. UTEP, rather. 52 Wyoming. 66 against New Mexico. And it's the first CSU team to score 50-plus three times in one season. Matt Wells knows that. Be tough today, but the high winds may be keeping the offenses in check here. And good defense, too. Hunt to punt to begin the second. And a fake. Fake. Max Morgan, the middle linebacker, takes it for a first down for Colorado State. And the Rams will keep it. <laughs> Great job by Jim McElwain getting the special teams. Max Morgan, fake little option play. Great job by the middle linebacker playing a little bit of running back, reading off of the blocks, getting downhill and picking up the first down. Now let's see if the Rams offensively are able to capitalize with a fresh set of downs. First down for Grayson. Play fake. Some time. Fired a cut right inside the 30. Maurice Alexander pounds him out of bounds, not before a very big pickup, though, for CSU. Chains move, gain of 29 down to the 25 of the Aggies. And here's where Garrett Grayson has done a great job with the play action pass. Kevon Cartwright lined up in a wing position. And watch the throw right there, right over the linebacker. That is just an excellent throw. Great concentration for Cartwright to come down with that pass with Zach Vigil blocking his vision. Incredible touch on the pass. First down. Grayson, more time. Fire to Hansley, incomplete. Brian Sweet on coverage near the five yard line. The scoreless first arch, the first scoreless quarter for either team this year in the first. Only the second scoreless quarter of any this year for either team. CSU, third quarter against the White. They were blanked. Otherwise, they would put a lot of points on the board. Both teams this year. Second down. Patient running to the left. Vigil to stop on the three bibs. Gain of five up to 27 yards now rushing. In the game today, closing into the all-time single season. CSU record. This guy's taken the Mountain West and the nation by storm. Played one year JC ball at Snow College in Ephraim, Utah, south of Salt Lake, about 200 miles from here. Didn't play football last year. Took classes at a community college in Fort Collins and attended the CSU practices. That's it. Oh, he's making up for it now. What a story. Here's third down. Grayson some time over the middle. Crockett, Gilmore has the catch. Kyler Fackrell makes the play defensively. Gain of eight. And Gilmore continues his big season up to 35 catches. Nice job of Dave Baldwin designing this offense, this play. Three wide receivers to the right. They all cross the field, set kind of a natural pick pattern for Crockett Gilmore to come underneath. He's wide open. Grayson, again, able to find his tight end. So the use of the tight ends today and for the last few games of the year, big part of the success on offense. Here's first down. And Bibbs looks for some room up the middle. Gets himself to the 10. And 29 yards now for Bibbs on the day. Today's red zone is being brought to you by Verizon. Bibbs after the weekend, tops in the nation, 25 rushing touchdowns. Keenan Reynolds of Navy. How about the game last night for the midshipman quarterback oh, against San Jose State? Seven rushing touchdowns to mids win in overtime. He's got the national lead now, officially. Seven. That was, a heck, that was a heck of a ball game last night. It was. Here's Bibbs. Again, lies through traffic eight, between eight. the tackles. A Ram player lost his helmet. That's Jared Beard, the right tackle senior from League City, Texas, near Houston. Got to sit out for one play. Jake Downey in the last tackle for Utah State. Third down. Rams can get a first. First time in the red zone. All day, 14th play of the drive.
Grayson. Tom. Grayson for Gilmore. Climbs the ladder and can't bring it in. With Zach Vigil on coverage incomplete. Fourth down. Field goal time, it appears, for CSU. And it really was a nice coverage by Zach Vigil. He's got Crockett Gilmore man-to-man. -man, three wide receivers to the right side. Running a little bit of a high-low combination. And there's just no place to throw in Grayson has to throw it out the back of the end zone. So a nice job of the Utah State Aggie defense after giving up an explosive play, tightening up and forcing the field goal. Roberts, 16 of 18 so far. Junior from Littleton, Colorado. Into that tough win, upright, and no good. And Matt Wells loves it. A chip shot field goal attempt for Roberts who had been five for five on the year from that distance. We told you about the crosswind today. Gusting at 25 miles an hour, and the kicker struggling in pregame on that end. Matt Wells loves it. It's no good. For Jim McElwain, Jared Roberts, third miss of the year, only fourth of his career. Evan Washburn, the question is, weather conditions down there, was that a factor on that kick? I think so, guys. The wind is a factor, not only in the kicking game, but also in the passing game. For Utah State, they're not used to this. Everybody I've talked to on the sideline said, we don't get a lot of wind in this stadium. And guys, remember, Garrettson's strength is this downfield throwing. We haven't seen a lot of success in that area for Utah State, but it is windy down here, fellas. Probably nice in that booth, though. It is. Thank you, Evan, for reminding us Adam Archuleta from the Phoenix area does not like cold weather so we're glassed in and comfortable up here thanks first down DiMartino across the 20 now Arch we're down on the field for warm-ups it looked like Garrettson was thrown pretty well in front of Matt Wells we talked with the coach in pregame for a few moments didn't seem like it was affecting him too much what do you think as a player down there? What's it like in windy conditions? Well, as a defensive player, it really doesn't bother me much. But I think what you're seeing right now is going the direction that the Aggies are going in. I think the wind is blowing in their face and affecting the passing game much more than the Rams are. So expect more downfield passing going in this direction. DiMartino, second level. His first big run of the day. Finally stopped by Bernard Blake outside the 35-yard line. Gain of 12. And a first down for Utah State. This is a veteran line. Tom, Tyler Larson, the center. Jamie Marcosi in the guard. Nice job on the double team on the 335-pound Calvin Tonga, clearing out some room for DiMartino. Back to live action. Bernard Blake on coverage on the pass intended for Reynolds. Incomplete near the 40. <laughs> Matt Wells' team coming off a bye. Their last game was at UNLV two weeks ago. Late season bye. Arch, what do you think of that in terms of getting ready and motivation, things like that? I, I really don't like it. I like the one one buy, preferably in the middle of the season, but you start breaking it up too much. When you get November, you just want to play ball. Garrett's on the play fake. Rolls, lots of time. Now he's flushed. Here comes some pressure. Cross field. And it's incomplete. Blake might have been the closest to it. <laughs> and he wears a Colorado State jersey. Third down. I'm impressed by the push the front seven is getting for CSU in this game. Yeah, they've done a nice job, and that's really been their calling card, playing pretty stout this season against the rush, second in the Mountain West against the rush. It's really been the big play passing game that's affected this defense. But so far, they're getting great play by their secondary, the front seven led by Shaquille Barrett, doing more than their job. Here's third down. Barrett coming again. More pressure and another sack. Corey James up to six and a half sacks for the season. And one more time, our Utah State is in the Colorado State backfield. Corey James again. This is the other guy that you have to watch out for, especially in the nickel and the sub packages. Plays the outside linebacker. You love that dip and rip. Great job of getting his pads low, running around that corner, and coming in with a sack. So, look, third down, I said it before the game, key to the game, stay out of that third and long because Shaquille Barrett, Corey James, going to make life very difficult for your offense to execute. Rugby kick, venture, it's a beauty. Hansley on bounce, takes it, and he's hit right away and dropped into 15. <laughs> Kelvin Lee. Sophomore from South Daytona, Florida. Nice play on special teams. Let's go for an update to the New York studio.
All right, Dave, thank you very much. Fresno State looking to close out the West Division against New Mexico. It's Derek Carr to Devante Adams. That's a school record, 16th receiving touchdown of the season. Fresno State on the board first. Also, Arizona leading Oregon 21-3 right now, guys. Whoa. All right, Adam, thanks. Interesting game of the Pac-12 there for the Mountain West. It's all about Fresno State, though. We'll see you next week against San Jose State. First down, Colorado State. Woke bounced around and drops after a short game. Nick Vigil first to get to Chris Woke. CSU does not have the services of Donna Alexander, the second leading rusher arch today, out with a knee injury. Jim McElwain had hoped to have him, so it's going to be Woke and Bibbs. On second down, Woke again. Off right tackle. Slides ahead for another short game. We'll give him about two on that run. Senior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, near Denver. Chris Woke. Had a touchdown reception against New Mexico last week in that high-scoring game for the Rams. And you look at this Aggie defense, their defensive front right now are just doing a great job getting off the double teams. They're not staying blocked, they're getting penetration, and that's not allowing Bibbs or Wokey to break into the second level of the defense. Here's third down. Pressure coming. Release pass for Sean Higgins over the middle. And he lunges out to the 25. He's a full yard shy of the marker. Gain of seven for the team's leading receiver, true freshman Rashard Higgins, his nickname Hollywood, from Mesquite, Texas, in the Dallas area, self-proclaimed Hollywood. That's his own nickname. And he's come on as well, both he and Capri Bibbs. And when the season started, they were trying to figure out who was going to be our game breakers, who's going to be the one guy that is able to change the game. Both of these are the types of players that Jim McElwain wants to get in this program. Guys that can take it the distance, that can make that big play when their offense Utah needs it. State. Utah State has used its second play stop until this first half. Still no score in Logan. Welcome back to Logan, Northern Utah, on the Logan River, 82 miles north of Salt Lake City. Spectacular scenery, especially this time of the year, the snow-capped mountains and lots of skiing going on in this part of the country. Travis Van Leeuwen, deep man this time to receive, not JoJo Natson. For Utah State, and Hunt to punt again here. He's been busy. Both punters have. Last time was a fake. He'll kick this time. Not a great punt off the side of his foot. And the Aggies will get good field position. At the 45-yard line. Of CSU, only a 20-yard punt. Well, the Rams on defense have been playing extremely well. Shaquille Barrett with a big sack. Big pass break up downfield by Bernard Blake. Again, Shaquille Barrett from the other side. And the other guy that you have to account for off the edge with great athletic ability, Corey James, on that last series. And so right now, this Rams defense making the individual plays and doing a nice job stuffing the Aggies on offense. Here's first down. DiMartino stopped by Aaron Davis at about the 41. Gain of five for Joey DiMartino. The sack we saw there a moment ago for James. Last year he set a CSU freshman record, seven and a half sacks. Second of the Mountain West. Changed positions this year from defensive end to Sam or strong side linebacker, but he's still been effective, especially the latter half of the year, Corey James. Here's second down. JoJo Natson gets the carry. Calvin Tonga is the first to get to him. He's short of the first down by about two yards. Gain of four for JoJo. Bruce Natson, another Floridian. Several Florida kids have made the long, and we mean long track cross country to play here in Logan. Nice pipeline to the Sunshine State. Here's the sunshine look. Direct snap to JoJo coming. 
Fakes the jet sweep. That's it. Keeps that's it. Pit down. Aaron Davis is right there to make a huge play defensively. Loss of four. Great recognition by number 30 or 37, Aaron Davis. He's the linebacker right here. They're going to fake the counter play this way. Aaron Davis doesn't fall for it. Scrapes right off the edge. Nice open field tackle on a shifty wide receiver. Another example of an individual player making the one-on-one -on -one stop at the point of attack. Another excellent stand for the Rams defense. Ben Trude, another effort. Hansley grabs a fair catch inside the 10. Davis had a CSU best nine tackles against New Mexico in the Rams last game. Big play here today. Last week at New Mexico, Capri, Bibbs, tied a Mountain West record, set a Colorado State record. Six rushing touchdowns. Arch today, though, not so much. No, not at all. It's a different animal. You're not going against New Mexico or Nevada, two of the worst defenses in the Mountain West. The Aggies doing a nice job stuffing that veteran offensive line for the Colorado State Rams. But when you're playing against a running back like this, it only takes one. It only takes that small crack, and it's all over but the shouting. So the Aggies doing a great job. But this is a 60-minute ball game, and if you watch Capri Bibbs, he gets better as the game goes on. 22 yards so far today. You're right about that. We broke down the numbers. Fourth quarter, he averages 9.7 yards a carry. He does get better as the game progresses. We'll see today. First down for Grayson. Here is Bibbs. Little cutback. And ahead for three-plus on the first down run. One of the things that, you know, talking to the defensive staff, defensive players of the Aggies, they were very conscious about the cutback ability of Capri Bibbs. Not a guy that can cut back one hole or two holes. He'll cut back all the way the backside of a defense. So you have to be very disciplined. That backside defensive end has to stay home to contain, contain that explosive back. Bibbs waits and again is wrestled down. AJ Pata'ali'i. Senior from West Valley, Utah. Transfer from Snow College, the same JC that Capri Bibbs played one season at. And in talking with Dave Ball when the CSU offensive coordinator arch last night, he said, what Bibbs is so good at, slow to it, fast through it. Slow to the hole, patient, then he really turns on the afterburners. But he hasn't really found the holes yet. 39 rushing yards so far on 10 carries. Crockett uh, make that Kevon Cartwright with the big tight end. And that jumbo formation gets the carry. And he's out to the 20. Gets four and picks up a first down. Let's go back down to Evan. Well, Dave and Adam, I'm here with the legend Bobby Wagner, linebacker for the Seattle Seahawks and uh, former Utah State Aggie. This is your kind of ball game, Bobby. Zero, zero. What do you have to say about what your defense has done so far in this game? They've been doing a great job, you know, uh, coming into the game, I heard a lot about the running back, it's supposed to be pretty good, but we're doing a good job of uh, holding them to, to pretty much nothing. Now, you have a bye week. You could go back to your, your home in California, you could stay in Seattle, put your feet up, but you make the trip here to Logan. Why? I just think that it's important for, uh, you know, NFL players to come back to, to their schools, especially Utah State, because it hasn't been that many players. So, um, you know, the more players that we have, it's going to be a lot more, you know, NFL players coming back. We we're just talking off camera here about some players on this defense who you think could play in the league. Obviously, yeah. Frackle comes to mind, Dowdy, Vigil. Yeah. How good is this defense when it comes to, to players that could play in the league in your mind? I just think they're really good. You know, I think that uh, they're one of the top defenses in the nation. It's, it's full of uh, players that just make plays. So, you know, you just heard Jake make a tackle. So, you know, they're they pretty good to me. But here you're talking. Well, Bobby, thanks so much for joining us and enjoy the game. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. Dave. Devin, Bobby, thanks. Highest Utah State draft pick since Rulon Jones in 1980. Second round pick, 47th overall. The Seahawks, Bobby Wagner, true legend here at Utah State. We saw 2011 WAC Defensive Player of the Year. Third and long here. After that big play that Bobby loved by Jake Dowdy. Pressure coming. Ball deflected and incomplete in the backfield. All sorts of heat on Garrett Grayson. And close to it there with the ball deflected was Maurice Alexander. 
And Todd Orlando loves to bring pressure, especially on third and long, off of the edge. This is a two-on-one on the running back, and he has no choice. He doesn't know who to block, and he lets the free safety, Alexander, come through, puts the heat on Garrett Grayson, and there's just no time for the downfield passing routes to develop. So nice job of getting home, getting to the quarterback, and forcing the punt. Van Leeuwen and JoJo Natson uh, deep to receive the kick here from Hunt. Better effort this time, but a good Utah State bounce. Aaron Davis grabs it at the 43. Still no score, only a 27-yard punt for Hayden Hunt, Matt Wells and company on a short field when we return to Logan. Hey, Adam Zucker here in New York. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, Johnny Football and Texas A&M tangle with the Tigers in Death Valley. Not looking good. Duke looking to stay in control of the ACC Coastal Division as they take on Wake Forest and a big Mountain West game. Ramifications with Fresno trying to stay undefeated and clinch the Western Division and a win over New Mexico. All that coming up at the half. Now back to Dave and Adam in Logan. All right, Adam, we can't wait. No score here in Chile. Logan, about 20 mile an hour wins. Rigid conditions here in late November. Top ranked Alabama over Chattanooga, no problem. 49 zip, that's in the fourth. About to finish that with Utah or uh, Florida State. All over Idaho, no surprise there. Top two teams. Adam and company will get us updated coming up. DiMartino, a nice run on first down. About nine and a half yards. Trent Matthews, free safety, made the stop. DiMartino again. Max Morgan wrestles him backwards, not before. He's inside the 30. And the chains move for the Aggies. Keep in mind, they used two timeouts early in the half here, which could become a factor. It's a lot of time for Gerritsen. DiMartino, second level of Enzo. Kevin Pierre-Lewis knocked him down out before a gain of nine. And Utah State's offense going fast here, Arch, very effective. Yeah, it looks like they're finding something. They're putting four wide receivers, double split out wide, spreading out that ramp defense, and then running a halfback draw up inside. And they're finding some holes. DiMartino. Turns the legs, Max Morgan tries to drag him backwards, but he pushes the pile forward. It'll be another first down for the Aggies to the 16-yard line. And this has been a, a defensive struggle. Both defenses playing outstanding. So now it's up to the offensive coordinators, Kevin McGiven, for the Aggies to probe and try and find out what are the formations, what are my personnel, what is going to give us the advantage. And right now it's spreading out that ramp defense and attacking inside with their running backs. First down, DiMartino again. Shaquille Barrett tries to pull him backwards, along with help from Curtis Wilson, the senior from Orlando, Florida. First time arching the game, Utah State's been in the Colorado State red zone. And they've been, they've been winning the field position battle. The average starting difference today is 31 yards of field position. And so in a defensive game, you have to win the hidden yardage because sooner or later, you're gonna have great field position and have a better chance of scoring. DiMartino again, bounces outside. Jerry DiMartino dragged down by Max Morgan. Not before, another nice pickup for Utah State. Clock is rolling here, will be in a moment. One timeout remaining ball. for Utah State. Hold the ball. A gain of eight. And a timeout call. Timeout. Colorado State. Their first place stoppage of this first half. Yeah, right here, Jamie Marcosian, Correction the right guard. Down. Does a nice job sealing the edge. This is supposed to be a kickout block, but look how he wraps around, gets the linebacker, gets his helmet inside. Then DiMartino, a nice job reading the block, playing off of his big right guard, and exploding to the outside for a big gainer. So a nice job by this front 
Nice job of Joey DiMartino and the offensive coordinator, Kevin McGiven, trying to lean on that ground game a little bit, trying to attack different parts of that defense that has been so good against the run for the Colorado State Rams. Mark Ozien, the senior from Salt Lake City, a transportation engineer manager. Major here. Wants to be in management in that field one day. Went to the same high school as Jake Dowdy. Met Jamie a couple weeks back over here for the Hawaii game. Things have changed here at Logan. 11 wins last year's school record. Clinch a third straight bowl bid. Playing big games in November. It had been a long time. And years prior before they were dominant. The thing that I noticed, Dave, about this football team, they've got athletes, size and speed. Third down, DiMartino. Depends on the spot. Fourth down. Did not get it. Yeah. Fourth down coming up, about a half yard shy. Under a minute, one timeout left. What do you do here for Matt Wells? I think they're going to go for it. I think they, they feel that they've got some power. It looks like they're going to send their kicker on the field. But I, I just assume go for it. I think you have an excellent chance of getting it right here. But I can understand trying to get the three points in the defensive ball game as well. And Jim McElwain wants a timeout for Colorado State. He'll use his second of this first half with 30 seconds left. Hey, you can't argue going up three points just before halftime in a, in a scoreless game. But I, I just think that, you know, sometimes you just got to go for it. And they have a veteran offensive line. I understand they're going up against a pretty stout front seven. But in this drive, they've been able to run the ball. They've been able to get some traction. And so, you know, I say, if it was me, I'd go for it. Utah State only 5 of 12 on fourth downs this year. Playing into what Coach Wells is thinking. Let's take a look at the Barbazal close shave replay. Missed field goal for Roberts. Upright and no good. Yeah, the one opportunity the Rams have had to score, that was after a fake punt. Remember, down in their own territory, they kept the drive alive. Then they had an explosive pass play, had a chance to get some points in what should be a chip shot, really, the distance of a, a point after attempt. So uh, that one, a little close off of the upright in here. The Aggies have a chance to go up three points. From 24, here's Nick Diaz. 12 of 16 so far in the year. Junior from Renando Beach, California and SoCal. High snap, but he's got it. And we finally got some points today here in Logan. Three nothing Aggies. Jared Bencher, also the team's punter arch. Nice job to bring down the high snap. And make sure Diaz could knock it through the uprights. Yeah, that was a great job. I don't know how those holders do it. <laughs> I would be scared to death sitting back there behind the center at seven and a half yards deep trying to locate that football. But a great job getting the ball down for Diaz to nail the field goal. Matt Wells will take it. Finally some points. I still think they had a chance to get six points on that drive or seven points. Obviously, you'll take the three nothing lead. But I just felt like that offensive line was starting to get some traction and DiMartino was doing a good job of getting downhill. Utah State has not been shut out in a first half since 2010 at San Diego State, so they avoid that. Jake Thompson kicks off. No chance for a return there for Tyree Simmons. 26 seconds left. Defensively, Utah State has held five of its last 24 opponents scoreless in the first half. Weber State this year in a route, non-conference game early in the season. And today's game would be another one of those defensive gems through 30. Well, and remember, Dave, last year they didn't allow a touchdown in the entire first quarter or the first quarter of the entire season. So they've done a great job defensively. Now, Colorado State Rams probably just going to try and run out the clock here, you know, go into halftime only down by three points, try and regroup, and try and figure out a key to unlocking that stout front seven from the Aggies. Utah State will receive to begin the second half. And that'll do it for the opening 30 here. 
Bibbs held in check. 41 first half rushing yards for Capri Bibbs, who a couple weeks ago against Nevada ran for a school record 312. Shaquille Barrett, tremendous first half. Two and a half tackles for loss, a sack and a half to expand his lead in the Mount West in both categories. Let's go back down to Evan Washburn. Well, Coach, what went into the decision to go for the field pole as opposed to going for it on fourth and short? Right there at the end? Yeah, right there at the end. Well, there's a, a canyon wind that's going about 30 miles an hour swirling. Okay, it's a defensive field position football game, and you got a chance to put points on the board and come out and get the ball to start the second half is a really easy decision. You mentioned that wind. What effect is that having in the passing game it's for Garrett? Yeah, it's a, well, it's effect for both guys. It's a swirling wind. It keeps changing, so it's affecting both teams throwing the ball. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. Coach Wells, Evan, thank you. End of the first half, only 3-0. Nick Diaz, a 24-yard field goal. That's been it for scoring. After the break, we'll send you back to our CBS Sports Network studio in New York for the Verizon Halftime Report, anchored by Adam Zucker.